Oh, you're funny. Like I said. Like I said. Like I said. Do you like my tail? Like I said. Welcome back to Iron Rage. I'm Dave Palumbo with Lee Priest on this post Olympia Iron Rage show. So it's only appropriate that we come up with a topic related to the Olympia. And Lee, you sent me earlier today. It must have been much earlier in your time frame. You, I don't even. What time was it? Like two in the morning when you sent that to me? I don't know, Dave. I don't know. Do you, you sleep? Know, you just, I don't think you sleep over there. I'm a vampire. That's yeah. when I have to get up at night. So, what do you mean post Olympia? Today in America is the 18th, isn't it? It's the 18th over there. Yeah. So it's post it's, after it's, the Olympia. It's, it's 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 Rainbow Day. Fuck the Olympia. Today, <laughs> Stallone got Stallone got a day for Rainbow Day. This is more important than the Olympia. Did he really? Is yeah. it Rambo Day? Is that really true? Yeah. Wow. Is there a Rocky Day yeah. too? If you followed actual good things to report on, like Rambo, not the Olympia, you'd know this shit. <laughs> much more, <laughs> much more appropriate to my uh, profession, exactly. Rambo. Oh, of course, you you prefer the men in oily oils and shit. I you know, know that so. that for I, you know where I saw First Blood, that for you know, the movie that started the whole Rambo series. I was. In, I know where you, I know where you first saw it. Where your girlfriend come home? She said, "God, I got my period. Look at this. Look at this. Fuck First Blood." <laughs> <laughs> no, you're wrong. I was in a, I was in soccer camp. I had, I had gone away to sleepaway soccer camp for a uh, for a week, and at the time they didn't know what to do with us at night there. So they went and they rented a VCR and a TV. You could actually <laughs> not everyone had one, so they rented one and we watched. People, they, fast, people don't know what a VCR is. You have to explain. No, what no, a VCR. it was it was tape cassettes, <laughs> and this had to be in the '80s. And I watched. 82 it come out, 82. I still, yeah, you're right. I still remember the two movies we watched. We watched First Blood and we watched uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Those two movies. I'm, I'm sure you remember a lot of stuff from that soccer uh, camp when you wait, went away, wait, Dave. Wait. Steve Blackman <laughs> it was, and his brother it was, Neil it were counselors of, at that camp, uh, Lee. It was a lot of first for you that weekend, I'm sure. <laughs> but what do I know? I'll just sip my tea. <laughs> like you said. Anyway, yes. you sent me a, a video, a YouTube video, of the press conference of the Mr. Olympia competition in 2001. That was the, th I think Ronnie had just won his third Olympia that year before. Uh -huh. This was the year that Jay Cutler was going to challenge him for the title. Um, but the press conference was really good because it was very controversial. King Kamali was there. Titus was there. They were arguing with each other. Sean Ray went on a, a, like a long, long rage about how he felt that everyone should get, all the competitors there should get prize money. And he felt that mm -hmm. the judging should be uh, full transparency. In other words, you should be able to see which judges, how they rated you um, in all the rounds. And since that point, I don't think it, it, it I don't think even, I don't think they ever fixed the problem. Even to this now, day, think, you can see what your I, scores are, but you don't see individually what each yeah. judge voted you. Yeah, you only see, like I sometimes think that when I was competing, you could go down to the hotel desk in the front lobby and they might have just had the scorecard, which you see online these days anyway, and it just right. shows the scores add up in your placing. But no, you never saw an individual one. And back then, Sean tried to get that going, and I don't know what happened to it. They said they were going to do it because that would be the best way because, you know, I know a lot of judges used to hate me, Dave. I won't name names, but, <laughs> you know, this way you could see, like, say I was in a contest and five, say there's nine judges and, eight of them gave me second, the one gives me seventh, you could say, well, I know why you give me seventh, but what's the real reason why you give me seventh now? So, <laughs> well, you know, so it, it would be good. Other, other sports have it. Look at the Olympics where they put up judge from France, 4.2, judge from here, 6.8. You know, it, it could be done. It's like, why not? <laughs> why? Yeah, no, I think it would be a great idea. Like they do, like you said, like in gymnastics or any, any other sport where they're, where they're ranking people so you can see what, you know, how you did. And I think that they, uh, Wayne D'Amelio, who had been running the uh, uh, IFBB Pro League back in that time period, said that they had done away with it. And Sean had referenced that they had done away with it because people with someone had threatened the judge or something like that after a poor <laughs> placing. But look, that could happen anywhere. I mean, you can't, you can't just hide, you know, the scores. I, I think that in this day and age, like you said, Lee, with the internet being so, you know, important and playing such a pivotal role in how we perceive these contests and how we watch them, it would be great to have an Olympia website where they actually pop the scores up there or put them right on the live cast screen 
So you can the see thing Judge is, One, Steve Weimer voted this, this Judge Two, Tyler Mannion voted this, Judge is, Three. The thing is, the way, the way it is now, well, it was when I was back then, if you were in the know, like you say you had good friends that were judges or you had good friends that were promoters, but people like me, I never found out. But someone say like Ronnie who knows people and Ronnie's coach knows some of the judges, they could tell Ronnie, I've spoke to such and such, you're in second place now, you're in third place. So some people did get a rough idea where they were placing leading into the night show and stuff like that. But going back to you, but this is one thing I hate and I saw it again. The 212 have their pre-judging in the morning and finals that night, but yet the Mr. Olympia, these bastards get a whole 24 hours to go away and see if they can fix up their fuck-ups, which I don't think should be done. You're right. If Derek, if Derek had 24 hours, he probably could have easily come back and won the 212 if he got rid of some of that water and shit. So... The Mr. Olympia needs to be judged on the one fucking day. If you've right. messed, up, messed up and got it wrong, too fucking bad. You don't get 24 hours to go back to your room and do hocus pocus, pop a few more <laughs> drugs and diuretics and do whatever you're going to fucking do. I did love to play. Who would, um, who was one of the guys Neil Hill got ready in the thing? And when he came out, Neil was like, yes, he's a bit off. Yes, we we missed it here. We messed up. What do you mean we messed up? You're his fucking coach and guru. You <laughs> You fucked up. This guy's following what you tell him to do. You <laughs> fucked up, Neil. It's not we. You fucked up. That's what happened. And William Bonnet, congratulations. You look great. You got rid of that fucking Neil Hill and you look fantastic. See, it proves you don't need a fucking coach. As simple as that. They're only experimenting with you. I've said it before. Like if you're getting people who are amateurs and stuff and you're showing them the rope, sure, you need someone to guide you. But if you're a professional, you've been doing it that long, you know what food works, you know what drugs work, you know this. The coach is just like them gurus like Neil Hill and them, Harney, I'll say their names. They're just experimenting. Here, try eating this. Try taking that. Did that pull it out? Let me come up, squeeze your skin. Ooh, still got a bit of water under there. Let's try this. Did it work? Oh, shit, that didn't work, did it? I guess we messed up. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> Getting back to full transparency in the, in the judging. Which is the topic I want to talk about. Oh, is that what we're talking about? Is that what we're talking you about? You like talking about everything. Yeah, I don't mind. You can go any way you want with this. But when I remember back, I think when I was doing the Nationals in the USA around maybe 2002, 2003, they were putting up scorecards, which each mm -hmm. judge's score. This was in the amateurs. And I remember, I'm not going to say which judge it was. I remember asking a judge, I had taken second at the show. And I went up to this judge after the thing and I had said, what do you think? You know, because I kind of knew him. He was kind of theoretically a friend. But Obviously wasn't. And he said, oh, you look great. I had you right up there. I had you first. And I said, oh, great, great, man. Uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know how I came in. Then I looked at the scorecards, and the guy had me fourth. So I went back, and I confronted him about it. I said, look, you know, you said me had me. Oh, I don't remember. I said, what do you mean you don't remember? You said I look great. Why would you put me fourth? Maybe I filled in the wrong spot. Oh, so I lost the show because you filled in the wrong spot? So, I, you know what I mean? So at least people can't bullshit you on, you know, the fact that they had you higher or lower than that, you know, it's out there. Put it out there. If I'm a judge, I have no problem telling a person that I didn't think that they deserve to win because I would back my decisions because that's my opinion. I'm just turning a fan on. I'm just turning the fan on because I got these new A5 thermogenics and I took two with my coffee and I'm heating up here. <laughs> oh, you're, you're sweating? You're spritzing? I can, feel, I can feel my face glowing, starting to glow. But that's true, though. You need to show it. It's like I said, it'll get rid of a lot of those. Because every, after every show, look look at this Olympia. How many times did I see posted already? It was politics that Hardy didn't win. It was politics that Hardy didn't win. It's because he's not American. It's like, uh, I, I don't believe that was an American, the one, the 212, yeah, you yeah. fucking dickheads. It's like, but, you know, look. The guy like, was third in the world, you know. Yeah, but even if you're third, you, if, saying you just missed out on first, you, you got to get second before you can say you're close to first. So, But look, the Olympia was good. People looked good. But when I watched the whole lineup, there wasn't no one that really jumped out of you and stood out. Normally, when you watch an Olympia, if Phil's there in great condition, you're like, oh, fuck, he's won. Let's go look for second and third. Right. Or if Ronnie's there, let's look for second and third. You know, it could have gone either way with any of them. And it's like, to me... No one really won it, but a lot of them lost it, even with Cedric. If he had to come in great condition, he could have won. Really, it was there for the taking if he had have come in dry and ripped to the bone. There were so many people that lost that show more than who won it. So it yeah. was like, it was so crazy. It was wide open for everybody. Everyone's just like, eh, let's just go and half-assed and do whatever. And and Derek, yeah, I like Derek. He's got great muscle mass and size and shit. But even for second year, I think he was lucky to get that. And... I see you mentioned Patrick Moore on another show. Now, there was a guy that was overlooked. To me, he looked like um, 
almost the new version of like a Bob Paris type physique with nice muscle mass on it, all those lines and symmetry and stuff. Right. So there were a few weird placings there, but as far as I think they went, you know, I think you no, know, it was a good call with Brandon there and Bonac and that and Hardy because you know I've seen Hardy look a bit better. I think at other shows and stuff and. I know people are saying, Lee, shut up, you don't want, you know, the people voted. But look, that's a people's choice award on who they'd like. They probably liked him because, yeah, yeah popularity because what he's went through to get there and stuff like that. You know, really won that last year, the popularity won, but he didn't look good enough to win the fucking Olympia, so it doesn't mean jack shit. Yeah. Unless you leave Priest 2006, <laughs> best posing, best posing, won the show and the people's choice award. Just in case people forgot, it's been a while. <laughs> I'm just hey. reminding you. And now someone's going to write, Lee, get over it. That was fucking 2006. Fucking yeah. who yeah. cares? Now, let me ask you a question. If, if you were competing in this Olympia and you were in the prime of your career, um, what division would you have done? Hottie did the Open. He wound up third. Would you have done the 212 and try to go for a sure win there? Or would you have done the Open and try to see how you could place in the Open division? Well, if I was in the best shape of my life, now this is no bullshit now if we look back, you know, when I was in the best shape of my life and I got fifth at the O or sixth at the O, ahead of me was Dorian, Nasser, Kevin, Flex Wheeler, Chris Cormier. And now if I look at Brendan Curry, not saying they're not good or Bonac or Hardy, I don't see them a bigger threat as what those other guys I just mentioned were to me. So <laughs> I would have quite easily done the Open because standing near those guys back in the day, Standing near Hardy and Bonac and would have been like being in the 212. So, you know, I would have just, you know, I'll be like, is this the you know, I never thought about that. You're right. It is almost like a, it is like a mini, it is like a little jacked up 212 class in the Olympia. This was, was like, this, this Olympia was, we had the 212 and the 245. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe the 225. Yeah. Not 245. Yeah. But, I, you know, Hardy would have easily, he would have easily won the 212 if he had done it. So it would have been an easy win yeah. there for him. But, but still, I just like, yeah, it was a good show all up, but I just, I don't know. I wanted to see someone really stand out that you just went, wow, look at him. And, you know, you know, I, I don't know how many I could go through my thing, how many death threats I got when I said Hardy wasn't going to win. Look, I'm all, I'm all for people being passionate. Look, if Flex Lewis had been in that show, I think Flex Lewis looks great. I would have been rooting for him to win. He probably could have won in his best shape that yeah. Olympia. But, you know, if someone says, Lee, he's not going to win or he gets second, I'm not like, fuck you, cunts, kill it, fucking politics, fuck this, fuck that. Look, I love the guy to win, but I'm not going to get passionate and threaten people's <laughs> lives like some of these fucking lunatics do. So, yeah, yeah it's like, how, oh, how my God. How do you God. think Sean would have done and then, they went, then they went spamming my Instagram account. No matter what picture it was on Instagram, I ran hardy, I ran hardy, and all the Iranian flags like, ooh, that's really going to bother me, people. Whoa. <laughs> Fucking hell. Just shows me how much time you people have got on your fucking hands to sit around and do that. Lee, how do you think Sean Roden would have done in that lineup? Would he have easily have won? Uh, if he was in his best shape and they looked like that, he would have won. But if he had been just mediocre, well, I reckon probably he would have been in the top five, top four, maybe top three. So it would have made it exciting because here, here now we had the champ. Is right. the champ going to win or is he going to lose? So that would have made it a bit exciting because... You know, we we're all hoping that it was going to be an exciting show, and it was up for grabs. But still, even as people say it was a bit close, and that I still think Curry. People say, "Oh, his legs were down. This was down." Well, they all had things wrong with him. Like I said, there was no clear winner where you said this guy is definitely the winner. So, you know, we can all. I said, yeah, the only guy that's happy is always the guy in first. Everyone else is going to bitch and complain, and you know. And I was correct. He did thank Jesus and God and stuff like that. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody else did second or first. Like, fuck you, God, fuck you. You didn't fucking listen to my prayers. So, you know, but, you know, he can't listen. Look, he's busy listening to Brandon, people. He hasn't got time for everybody else, all right? So God put his hand in that little, God put his hand in that hat and went, mm, who am I going to help? Brandon. Brandon, that's yours. So, yeah. Isn't that what all the U.S. presidents always said? God loves America, right? You know? Yeah. Doesn't love anyone yes. else. L listen. If you ha if you were competing in this show, I like to give these suppositions. I like to create these scenarios. If you were competing in this show and you did the two twelve division, okay? Against now, I'm talking about now. I'm not talking about at your best. Now, if oh, you now. be able to get yourself in the best shape of your life and you did the two twelve division, how do you think you would have done? Uh, if if I was in my best shape now, being closer to fifty, ah, uh, 
I reckon probably top six somewhere. I wouldn't say I'd win it or stuff like that, but I reckon I could probably slot into the top six somewhere in my best shape if I went back on order gear and trained hard and had that mentality again. Probably top six somewhere where I realistically think I could go because I've still got the muscle mass and stuff. Stuff would just be a matter of dieting down and seeing how I look in the conditioning. Well, conditioning, if I got the universe conditioning, would be okay. So it's just... I reckon maybe somewhere around the top six, if judged fairly, right. of course, if they showed the score sheets. <laughs> Although, if you did the Open Division now at 50 years old, you probably would have won the People's Choice Award, right? People's The People's Champ Award. I don't want to give me that for sympathy. Poor cunt's been back after all these years. Let's just give him, <laughs> no, <laughs> let's just give, let's give him something. The Blackman would have hired one of those the spam bots. They would have hi- voted six million times for you, and you would have won. Oh, if Blackman saw me on stage again, he'd just like erupt into a ball of cum in the crowd. <laughs> like that fucking, fucking Bukaki over everybody. Did, it just explode. Did you, see, did you see Blackman crashed our, uh, our wrap-up, the final wrap-up? He walked in the way of the camera? No, I didn't see it. No, At about 14 and a half minutes, yeah, you, you can go watch it. Blackman kind of gets lost you, in front of the you camera. You should have grabbed him. Why didn't you grab him in interview? I wasn't there. I, 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 I think that they pointed him out. Sid pointed out that he walked in. I would have grabbed him if I was doing the interview. Well, I Sid, Sid should what do you have think? grabbed him. Sid, in his Olympia voice, should have grabbed him as he walked past. So, <laughs> I like when Sid puts on that Olympia voice yeah. for the he has interviewing the down there. I would have been like, Steve, what do you think of the Olympia? What would Steve have said? <laughs> He would have said, who are you? Like, <laughs> I, I think Brandon looked great, but I had Toddy. Whoa. Did you see those glutes? Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> Woo! yeah but like I said, it was good, but now we've got a whole year to wait now. And that's the thing, too. It's like, yeah, Knee Hardy did good. And glutes. They, they did good, but I think if Sean was there in his best shape and we had Phil there in his best shape, you know, as good as Hardy was, I think Hardy might have moved back down a few places. So yeah. with a few of the bigger names not being there, some people – we're lucky to move up high, and like right. I said, that Patrick Moore, I think he should have maybe been a bit higher, and yeah, some of the two twelves too, because a lot of the two twelves were in good shape. There were a few weird, weird divisions like placings there and stuff like that. When you look at some of them, it's like, okay, well, why is he there looking good and he's up there? So it's like, yeah, it's you know, you think Sean, you think Sean always, Clarita will win the two twelve Olympia at, one, at some point in time? It's hard to say. He's, he's come a long way from, I remember, when he used to be to where he is now. Whether he can put on more mass and stuff, well, that remains to be seen. Yeah. You know, I think Sean Ray mentioned in one thing that Kamal's getting older now, so he might drop out. But then depends who comes into it, you know. It's like he's yeah. got a great physique. He's got good muscle mass. If, if he could add a little bit more, he's up there with the running because his conditioning's great. So, you know, it might be one of those things where, okay, somebody bigger might come in and win it. But it might be like doing Sean Roden if someone comes in and, they had a champion there a little bit off, and he comes in shredded. Well, he might win it that way. Hey, so. Here's a good scenario. How does Kamal do in the Open? Top five? No. No. His conditioning was great in that, but I don't think, you know, if Patrick Moore couldn't get top five looking like he did, Kamal's not going to get top five. And right. Patrick Moore standing near Kamal, I think, would beat Kamal. So it's like, yeah. you know. Right. But then again, once you get in the Open, We've seen it before, Dave. It's like the fucking Bermuda Triangle. Anything can fucking happen. It's a fucking mystery. We've seen people get placed where, and you're like, what the fuck happened there? So you can never call it. But if you could put up the judges sheets, at least it would be at least funny. Have them, you know, they've got the big computer screens now. Just have it come up as the judges write it down. I think it would be fun. Uh, yeah. So getting back, yeah, getting back to the tr- full transparency, would you, you would like to see the judges' scores revealed after each round? On some kind of a screen or some or online or something. I think, like that. I think, I think on a screen they could easily do it on a screen like they do in the Olympics and different other sports yeah. where it's individual sports like ice skating, gymnastics, as you said, yeah. and stuff like that. It doesn't. It's not hard for them to put it and just put it up there. And I think it'd make it more exciting to the crowd too. Because look, I love the Olympia because the fans get to go out there and meet them. But I think the most exciting part of the Olympia is the fucking expo because they go in there, they get free shit, they get to see the guys up close. I think the expo and the fucking party drugs after at the nightclubs is the best part of the fucking Olympia because really when you sit down and watch the show, it's pretty fucking lackluster boring. And if they want to, they talk about going mainstream. I hope whatever the rocks got cooked up is a bit more exciting. At least 
when Tom Platts did the WBF, they had all those costumes, the big stages where yeah. Tony Pearson come in and that fucking half a jet came out on the stage yeah. or Eddie Robinson hand glided in, at least at some sort of <laughs> theatrical entertainment. It's fucking yeah. Vegas, for God's sakes. You've got guys pulling True. rabbits out of their fucking asshole, and here we've got to just fucking oiled men walking on stage. It's well, like, you know what? Oh, it's Dan Solomon's got a lot of good ideas. You know, you should su- we should submit some of these ideas for him for next year. And I think I he's should, the kind of guy that's like not afraid Olympia to do planner, it. Shouldn't I shouldn't know. Oh, what? what their big plan this year was, I noticed it. Fucking fantastic. What did I see? The bodybuilders pictures on the elevator doors. Fucking wow. Wow. <laughs> fucking who's on this elevator door? Oh, it's fucking Ruley. Who's on this elevator door? Oh, you've spared no they always, they always do that. They, they've been doing that the last couple of years, though. <laughs> Well, that's just. Well, that means they haven't fucking done anything new, no, then, have they? No, what, what, no, what did Dan they, did a phenomenal what, job with the Olympia this year. And you know what? Okay, tell me that. Start, tell me what starting did they with do the fact that he actually gave us press passes and actually cared well, about the say, fact that we were at the show. I see. That's why you don't want to say it was a bit shit because you don't want to lose it. No, it's not that. He actually went out of his way. I actually texted him during the show. <laughs> there was a problem. And he went and he took care of it instantly. For okay, us. but but how was the show different from when he didn't run it? That's what I'm asking. I think that I think that I think the place was packed. Did you see how how many seats were sold? It, it was sold out. That's got, sold that's out. got nothing to do with him. But what happened? What, what that made the show different? Like as far as the guys coming on stage, the lead up to it, the press conference. What was? Well, different they put the, from cla- the they put the classic guys now on the main stage. I thought that was a good move. On Where would it? Did the two twelve? Did the two twelve? Did the two twelves get on the main stage? They did it. Uh, yeah, Friday night. Friday night. And the I think they all, and they, I know for the, fact they also increased the, the price. The bikini got on there. The bikini got on there on the main night, Saturday night with the right. boys. That's when the two twelve should be on. No, the I, you know, I, I, I disagree. I'll tell you, I disagree because I think that you <laughs> want to keep the excitement on both nights. I think the two twelve is exciting. You got classic and open on on Saturday night. I would like to see a pose down between all the men's champions on Saturday night at the at the end. But and, maybe, it, and here's another thing I want to bring up why you yeah. mentioned it, Regan. I did yeah. the bikini. Yeah, look. Look, Did you like I the respect, results? I, I respect anyone that fucking trains and gets up there, but these Hawaiian tropics girls, right? Let, let's just face it, that's bikini. It's just fucking, look, and this is fair income. I've asked a lot of judges here in Australia and some in America and some who aren't judging anymore. I used to fit, always ask them, now, be honest with me, when you got all these girls with the hair done, the makeup, the fucking bolt-ons, the fucking shit like this, I said, how do you judge this? And their exact words, I quote, I place him in order of who I'd like to fuck the most. Now, <laughs> that's them, and that's the God's honest truth. I swear to God, even though I don't believe in you sometimes, but I'm swearing to you right now. That's what they said. And and look, and I spoke to a lot of these girls, and my daughter competes and stuff, and nearly every one of the girls I talk to hates that pose where they fucking turn to the back, they yeah. walk there, and they stand and put their ass out, yeah. and you, all you see is their ass. And, now, now, tell me. As a man, when they do that, where do your eyes go? You're looking straight at the ass and the vagina. You're not looking at the back. Am I lying? Am I lying? No, I agree. I think it's a ridiculous pose, to be honest with you. What What, what, what are they showing? What, they're not showing anything. They're just, And then they do it up close, and they take a few steps forward, and they stop and do it again. They're showing your ass and the vagina. And the thing is, the girls fucking hate doing it, so why don't all your girls fucking hashtag me too, unite and stand together and say, we're not doing this pose. You can show your glutes side on. If you turn to the back, put your legs together and show right. your fucking or lats cross, or shoulders. Or cross your legs to but the they, back. They, they stand there better. and they go, Ugh, look at what I just had for fucking breakfast. That shit like that. That's like, that's a, look, I judged the show once for NABBA in Sydney. When the girls did that, I looked down because I was embarrassed sitting there as a judge. That's a judge. <laughs> you're very you're close. Fucking, you're, you're right there. Yeah. It's almost like fucking... That what is it? Fucking scratch and sniff TV. You're fucking right there. And I was embarrassed to look up. I just kept my head down like this. I was like, I just wait to finish this because I'm looking straight up there. I can see where our children will fucking come from. So you got to keep looking down. And then sometimes, heaven forbid, the little bikini's not in in the right place. And here's the thing, and here's the bikini and fucking flaps hanging out the side like that. They got a fucking. It happens. I've seen it happen. So, look, the women need to unite and say this pose shows nothing better. And that's all you're looking at is the. When I was watching on the screen here, that's all I saw was ass and vagina. You're not looking at their back, their shoulders, their calf, their fucking shoes and shit. We all know where people are staring. 
and they hate doing it, so why is it done? I want to know why. Someone give me a question or an answer to that. Why is it done, and what are we meant to be looking at? We know what we're looking at there, so... Band, oppose, you women, you hate it, you know, like, just don't do it. The men can't do the moon pose, right? It. Isn't that banned? Yeah, the moon And that actually showed fucking hamstrings when you actually bent over. Right. It showed all your fucking hamstrings and calves. But they said, oh, no, that's not good. So what we have now, we've got the girls showing their ass and vagina, and the fitness girls have to do that fucking big leg spread to the fucking judges <laughs> where they lift themselves off the stage and fucking spread their legs. <laughs> but, hey, that's, that's not rude, is it now? Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> The that, world. That, that's part of their routine. I remember Adela had to do that. It's like part of the mandatory thing. Spread yeah. to the judges. Come and fucking eat it. Do you want it? Fucking eat that first place. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and, but yet the women do it and they complain. I've had so many girls say, I hate doing the pose, hate doing the pose. I'm like, then why do you do it? Fucking stand together and fucking right, right. don't I, do that I pose. I hate that pose too. I think it's ridiculous. I'm surprised Sandy hasn't put in you know, a request to change that. But if, if, I can understand if it showed muscle, but it's not even showing muscle no. because the way they arch their back like that and push their ass out, or you look at the ass and vagina, they're not showing their shoulders, their rear delts, their lats, no. nothing. It's just you focus right there because it's coming at you like that. Right. Well, you know what? It's you like can do that pose face not sucker, leaning face over. Sucker from, face sucker from AM. You know why those girls lean at... over, lean? They lean right. over because it pulls the skin tighter on their ass so it doesn't sag. But what it comes out to, well, it comes of... out to like they're leaning over. But yeah. most of those girls they haven't got saggy because they're in condition anyway. There's no fucking saggy I'm telling skin you, there. And, and they do that. When they lean over they do like that, that side on one where they go and push their hip out with their glute. <laughs> and like I said, just just walk to the back of the stage and stand there like in that mandatory right. relaxed pose. Where I you're agree. Showing with you. your lats and, I agree with you. But they spread them, spread them out. Look at that fucking All alien. Right. So what we got from this show is we want. Full transparency on the judges. We want to see the scores up on the screen. Oh, and we don't, bikini, and we don't want to see bikini. vagina on no. stage. Okay? Save it for the bedroom. The bikini. I, I saw full transparency in the bikini. Trust you and me. I, <laughs> I saw a lot of stuff happening there. It's like, is that Tan running down the leg or is that fucking her going uh, for first place last night? She's still dripping. Uh, what the fuck's that? All right. Uh, what? What? <laughs> what? Soon. What are you on about? Too no soon. one died. No one died. What are you on about? Too soon. Too soon. But that's none of my bit. I'm gonna be like Kermit the Frog. That's none of my business. <laughs> Lee, listen. You underestimate the power of the dark side. And on that note, no, I saw the dark side. <laughs> 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 I saw the dark side and the pink side. I got fucking pink eye watching. What the fuck? That's none of my. But that's none of my. But that's none of my. <laughs> we'll see you next business. time. <laughs>